Looks like it's finally payback time for the three idiots who plundered Indian banks and fled abroad. In a major breakthrough and one hell of a good news for all the Indians, the Enforcement Directorate has transferred assets worth Rs 9,371 crore belonging to fugitive businessmen Vijay Malia, Nirav Modi and Mehul Choksi to various state-run PSU banks. This will help them recover multi-crore losses that they incurred when these three ran away after burning a huge hole in the Indian economy. In fact, the total assets attached by the ED are worth a whopping 18,170 crore rupees. This also includes assets worth 969 crore rupees located in foreign countries. The value of those assets represents a staggering 80.45% of the total losses that these banks incurred in India. In a statement, the Enforcement Directorate said today, as on date, out of the total seized assets of Rs 18,170.02 crore under the provisions of the Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002, assets worth of Rs 329.67 crore were confiscated and assets worth 9,041.5 crore representing 40% of the total loss to the banks have been handed over to the public sector banks. Following the ED crackdown, Finance Minister of India, Nirmala Sita Raman tweeted, Fugitives and economic offenders will be actively pursued, their properties attached and dues recovered. Now, as we all know, all of these three big businessmen who rubbed their flashy lifestyles and brands in the faces of the Indian public and often hired big celebrities to endorse their outrageously expensive products, looted the Indian banks royally by taking advantage of the loopholes in the system and a few corrupt employees and politicians. Vijay Malia, Nirav Modi and Mehul Choksi, all facing extradition trials, have defrauded public sector banks in India by siphoning off the funds through their companies, which resulted in a total loss of a massive 22,585 crore rupees to these banks. Now, after the CBI filed an FIR in the matter, the Enforcement Directorate unearthed a web of domestic and international transactions and stashing away of assets abroad linked to the borrowed money. The Enforcement Directorate said that their investigation has also proved that Vijay Malia, Mehul Choksi and Nirav Modi use proxies or dummies for rotation and siphon of the funds provided to them by the banks. And that's not all. The Enforcement Directorate has been doing some exemplary work in this high-profile case to recover the dues from these white-collar criminals. Now recently, the ED has transferred shares worth 6,600 crores to the SBI-led consortium as per the order from a special court in Mumbai. Debt Recovery Tribunal on behalf of the consortium of these banks has also sold the shares for over 5,800 crore rupees. The transferred attached assets also include real estate properties and other movable assets of these three fugitives. Now, India on its part has already completed the investigation in the money laundering case against these three and has sent extradition requests for all three to the UK, Antigua and Barbuda. While it's a long-drawn legal and diplomatic battle for extradition, thankfully, among these three, the veteran scamster Vijay Malia, who was the first one to flee India, might just be brought back to India soon. Malia's extradition has been ordered by the Westminster Magistrates Court and also confirmed by the UK High Court. Since Vijay Malia has also been denied permission to file an appeal in the UK Supreme Court, which is the highest court there, his extradition to India is now final. Vijay Malia, the owner of the now defunct Kingfisher Airlines, has been facing the ED probe after his company defaulted on bank loans. While the ED and the CBI were investigating the matter, Vijay Malia left the country five years back on 2nd of March 2016. This was the very same day that the banks moved the debt recovery tribunal against him. In January 2019, he was declared a fugitive economic offender under the Fugitive Economic Offenders Act. Let me also tell you that 65-year-old Vijay Malia has exhausted the full legal procedures available to him to fight the Indian government's extradition attempts and hopefully he will be in India soon to face the charges of fraud and pay for his crimes. Mehul Choksi and his nephew Nirav Modi wanted in the Rs 13,500 crore Punjab National Bank loan fraud case fled India in January 2018. Choksi, the owner of the defunct jewellery giant Gitanjali Group, became a citizen of Antigua through a government-run scheme over there. And as for Nirav Modi, the Westminster Magistrates Court 
has now ordered his extradition to India. Nero Modi has been in a London jail for the past two years on the basis of an extradition request by India. In February this year, the UK's Home Secretary, Preeti Patel, signed the extradition order of Nero Modi herself. So what is your reaction to this latest piece of breaking news that is clearly one of the most awaited for the people of India? Does it rekindle the hope for justice within you? And if you are one of the victims who was directly impacted by any of these scams, then for sure, please relate your experience in the comment section below. I would also actually love to feature you live on my channel and talk about your experiences over there. You can of course also connect with me on Instagram. It's at the rate review Ron. We can talk about this development or any other story over there. Subscribe here if you find my video is worth it. But even if you don't do any of these things, thank you so much for watching this one. Please take care of yourself and those around you. Jai Hind.